in Romans, the 10th chapter, the second verse. It says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. They're excited about serving the Lord. I mean, just so excited about serving God, but not according to knowledge. Knowledge is something that's very important in your relationship with the Lord. Not of what man crams in your head. It's the knowledge of the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the road map to heaven. And, and, and I don't know how many, how many different denominations they are it, just in the United States, but, I mean, you know, you can count them on your hand. There's a bunch of different churches, even in the United States, and everybody's got their own ideals and their own opinions. But how many knows there ain't but one way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the what? That's it. This is our only road map to heaven. It's through the word of God. And when we forget and we try to pollute, and, and, and people say, well, when you preach it too soft uh, that you uh, watering down the gospel. I've never watered down the gospel. Sin is sin, and if you don't get it fixed, it'll carry to hell. How much more plainer can, can you put it? But I do want to, we're going to minister tonight on grace is an inside job. And I want you to understand we studied the other night on, in Galatians, the fifth chapter, about the 17 works of the flesh. How many remembers that? adultery, uh, uh, fornication, uh, all this stuff, uh, uh, witchcraft, all this stuff, uh, 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 emulations, jealousy. I'm, I can't think. There's 17 works of the flesh. Can I ask you, uh, just let's take fornication and adultery, which is a big one in our eyes. Uh, is, that a, is that actually, does it begin, when you actually commit that sin, does it begin, does the act begin or the thought begin first? So it's an inside thing. Everything that we deal with in our life, and, and sin is an inside condition, not an outside. It would never happen on the outside if it never started on the inside. So what we got to understand, if before I make the choice to step out, and I'm not going to do it, God help me, to step out on my wife, it has to start in my mind. So the problem actually isn't the act. It is because she'll kill me. <laughs> I mean, the act is a sin. But as you think in your heart, so are you. As a man thinketh in his heart. So we, we've had this discussion before that if I just think about something, uh, I got to fix that too. Amen. Right? Uh, if, if the Bible says if I look upon a woman in lust, I've already committed it in my heart. Right? But that doesn't mean that, that it's, uh, if I go ahead and act on the, the, the act or deed, then I'm going to make somebody else's life as miserable. But if I just keep it in a thought process only, I can take it to God and fix it. I need to fix it, amen? If I think about doing evil things and don't act on them, it's a whole lot easier to fix and contain because as soon as I take it to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I'm sorry with a repentant heart, when does the issue go away? He may spank me, those without chastisement, bastard, and not a son. So I'm a child of God. If I think wrong and, and I repent, he still may whip me. Yes. But that's his right because he's my daddy, right? Yep, right? I mean, my mom and daddy tore me up. <laughs> I mean, they didn't know what child abuse was about. <laughs> Amen. They didn't know when to stop. Golly. But how many knows we need to, and what we're preaching on tonight or teaching on, grace is an inside job. And how many's ever went to church and, and they always trying to fix out the outside? Yeah. But on the inside, they mean as a snake. Don't love nobody, talk about you, run people down. Listen, they ain't had, they don't know what salvation is because all they doing is looking to look, but they're not acting like. Amen. I gotta have a knowledge. And, and the third verse says, For for they be in ignorance of God righteousness. And going about ex to establish their own, that means to set up or show to be true. Hey, look at me. I don't never wear short sleeves. When I, I'm using this as an example. I do. Because anybody that works in, on a 12-12 pitch roof and it's 98 degrees outside, I mean, I mean I'm going to have short sleeves on. Yeah. It's hot. Hispanics wear a long sleeve because they say once they sweat, they get cool, cool, but I can't make it that far. I got to take, I, I got to wear short sleeves, you know. 
Well, it's true. They all wear long sleeves and a floppy hat. And a scarf. And a scarf, yeah. I can't do that. Establishing their own righteousness. Listen, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That word believeth there is a very important word. Right? How do you know? Look over in Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter, the eighth verse. It says, for grace ye are saved through faith. You got to believe. You got to have faith and confidence in the salvation of the blood of Jesus Christ. If you start having confidence in oneself and look at me, I've never cut my hair. I've got dread, and I'm not knocking no church. I'm just going to be honest and be truthful, right? If you look at me and I've got a long dress on, I never cut my hair and all this stuff, it's not about God's righteousness. It's about my own righteousness. I'm trying to set myself up in your eyes. And the biggest scripture I always hear that really just burns me up, you got to be a separated people. You got to be separated from the world. And therefore, when you look at my outer appearance, that sets me apart from the world. That's the biggest false religion that I've ever heard in my life because what sets me apart is is not what you see out here. It's what's coming out of my belly because the word says that out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's not what goes in the mouth that defileth a man or a woman. It's what comes out. And listen, they, they, can, they can look the part, but if they ain't got an inside job, then they're establishing their own righteousness and they're ignorant of the knowledge of God. Listen, Every one of us in here is saved by grace. If you're saved, you're saved by grace. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of who? I was raised that if a hair touched my ears, my daddy would slap me. Because if we was in the car and before I got out for church and, and if I didn't keep my hair pushed behind my ears because he was so, and I'm not, my daddy wouldn't mean to me. It was just the traditions and doctrines that they was under so strict and in depth in this strictness of, uh, of religion that if I, if, if I got out of the truck or the car when we went to church and if I didn't push it behind my ears, I would absolutely, got, I got a warning first, but if they caught me, I would get a whipping. This is righteousness of man. This is establishing what you see, and you're going to judge me by what you see. I don't want you to judge me. I may not have nothing but old rags to put on. Don't judge me by that. Judge me by how I love you, how I treat you, and how I act to the other people. This is what separates me from the world. It's not what I look like. It's what I act like. And if I act right, how many knows I've had a good inside job? Because grace is not an outside job. It's an inside job. I, and, and the old saying is true. If you clean up the inside, the outside will take care of itself. Listen, nothing you and I can do other than submitting ourselves, submissive, being submissive unto the righteousness of God. That's the only way we can make it to heaven, right? It's being submissive to God and His righteousness and not establishing our own righteousness. As we talked about last week, how many's ever sat in here and felt like, well, God can't use me until I, until I, I fast this or do that. And, and, and we look in the mirror and we actually tell ourselves, I'm not worthy for God to be using me. How many's ever done that? So therefore, when you, when you walk in that state of mind, you're establishing your own righteousness and you don't know it. And as we visited last week, it, it, listen, the Bible says if I live under the law and if I offend in one area of that law, I'm guilty of it all. But in return, if I only live in certain aspects of the law according to the flesh, and if I don't worry about the rest of the stuff, I just pick and choose and cherry pick the scriptures and pull out, like so, so to speak, Deuteronomy, where it talks about what we wear and we make a religion out of that. Listen, if I'm going to live by one order of the law, I got to live by it all. Because if I fail in the rest of it, I'm guilty of it all. 
I love this scripture. For grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a what? A gift of God. You got a cold water for them? Did y'all bring them? Yeah, they always give me. All right. It is a gift of God. It's a gift of God. That's what it is. And I'm not going to get on. I'm just going to stay away from that tonight. Hopefully I can. It's a gift of God. Listen, I, I am going to say this. You don't have to work and pay for the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. It's a gift. It, how do I get the Holy Ghost? I submit myself to the righteousness of God and don't go about trying to establish my own righteousness. I submit myself to God. Through what? The act of repentance. Changing my heart and submitting to God and say, God, I'm ready. I want to receive you into my heart. I'm tired of living my life the way Greg wants to live it, but I'm ready to surrender to you. And the Bible says to be buried with him in baptism. He said you resurrected in the newness of life. Listen, we, we understand that we got to give our heart to the Lord. And it's a gift. Now, that verse, not of works, least any man should boast. Boast is pride and self-satisfaction about one's achievements. How many has ever seen a religious person look down on you because you uh, eat a popsicle before they come, you come to church and they don't ever touch one? Is that a good explanation? It'll work. I try to preach without being offensive, but sometimes I am a little bit offensive, and I'm sorry, but I just got to get to the truth, right? Listen, in, 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 in the religion, I was raised apostolic, and the women really suffered really hard in the apostolic doctrine. Men didn't have so many restrictions on them. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say the restrictions on the outside. And men's restrictions wasn't so quite harsh, right? And, 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 if, and, and somebody sees you out, can I just be honest tonight? Can we just preach or teach? Somebody sees you out at Walmart with a pair of pants on. What kind of reaction have you got out of, if you've been raised that way, out of somebody that, that looks holy? How many's ever got a bad reaction? I'm, I'm trying to be easy. How many's ever got a bad reaction out of somebody? All the time. So is this boasting in, in, in their own salvation or not their salvation? Ooh, Lord, I got to get a refer word that. Is it boasting in their own works or not? Because what you're saying is, I'm looking at you down. I'm looking down on you because you're not doing what I'm doing. And you know what? What you're doing ain't going to get you to heaven. It's what he did for you and I. And when we start looking at that, you don't start, when you see people with, with the, that looks different than you, you quit looking at their outer and you start talking to them and you see where their heart is. Because they may be going through some hell and you might could help them, but you have nothing to offer them because you're all about what you look like and about self boasting and say, look at me, I'm holy, God can use me. That's not how it works. How many knows it's about on the inside? If you get the inside right, how many knows God can use you? Amen. Some of us preachers has had to face criticism for, from uh, smarter, more established cliques of preachers. Any preachers here can amen me? Because you don't, you you haven't traveled the the or joined their union or joined their uh, satisfying cliques. You get shoved out, and you're not you're less of a man. Listen, I'm not less than anybody. Did you hear me? I'm not less than any. Am I something? No, I'm not. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when I get my confidence out of myself and what people saying about me, all I say is, God, you know what? Just use me. Never boast 
in what you're doing in your religion to get to heaven. It speaks for itself. Because what are we in the 10th verse? For we are his workmanship. And you know where God works at? In your heart. And when we open our mouth, how many ever say, I'll tell you off in a minute, or I'll tell you. That's not the workmanship of God. Amen? Amen? I mean, I wish they'd say something to me. This is not the workmanship of God. This is the workmanship of your mama and daddy. And when you was born into this world from the workmanship of your mom and daddy, you was born into the world of sin, of flesh, of sin and death. Until you accept Jesus Christ, you're walking in the law and rule of the knowledge of sin. And the knowledge of sin brought forth death. And when sin revealed itself, it brought forth death. And who? And Paul said, who shall deliver me from this, who, this old wretched man that I am? Who shall deliver me from this? I thank God. For Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. That's who's going to deliver me. And if when I walk around, how do I become separated from the world? It's not about my workmanship. Is this good tonight? Yes. Who are we tonight, church? We are His yes. workmanship. That means His creation. See, we mess it up when we, when we come to the Lord and we start allowing the denomination, which means demonic, I'm sorry. It means dominion. That's what it means. And what does dominion mean? It means that a church has took on a name and governing laws that they restrict or impose upon the members and they have to live by those laws. You better make sure those laws line up with the Word of God because if they don't line up with the Word of God and if they're teaching you something that's not His workmanship, listen, you are bringing yourself under a curse. That's why here at the House of Salvation, it's going to be line on line and precept on precept. And if y'all tell me and show me I'm wrong, guess what? I'm going to fix it before God and you guys and the whole world. I'll say I'm sorry and I'm wrong. Amen. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Yes. What are we supposed to become when we become created by Christ Jesus? A what? A new creature. If you, if you claim to have the Holy Ghost and you're still acting like you did all your life, something's wrong. You ain't had an inside job. I know this is going to get me in trouble. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, uh, He has prepared a path for each and every one of us to walk in. Amen. Some of us are called preachers, teachers, prophets, whatever helps governments. There's a lot of, 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 of workmanship in the body of Christ. Yes. And there's no big eyes and little U's. Just because you a pastor don't make you the big dog, it just means, means you got a lot of pressure on you. But it doesn't make you no more special than anybody else. We a team and a body working together for Christ. Yes. We all are the workmanship of his hands and not some doctrine that man has imposed on the church and put us under bondage and nobody how many's ever seen religi uh, uh, real strict religious people ever happy really? Something's wrong, right? Because the can somebody tell me what the fruit of the spirit is? Temperance Against, there's no such laws, right? Meekness. This is the workmanship of Christ, right? This, this is who we're supposed to be. If you claim that you're a child of God, I need to find some joy in you. You see, I can smile all day long and fake it, but joy is an inside job. Amen? Because out of my belly, uh, uh, the Bible says, with joy I shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation. With joy. And if I ain't got no joy, I'm not going to be happy about serving the Lord. I'm going to be mad and nasty. Come on. I, God has prepared a, a plan for each and every one of us. We should walk in them, right? In the plan that God, the plans that God has for our life. I'm not going to stay up here too long. 
In the 11th verse, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past, in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called circumcision. In other words, the Jews were circumcised and they looked down on the Gentiles because they wasn't under that covenant because they wasn't Jews. And the Jews looked down upon the Gentiles because they was a, they was a secondary race unto them. And, and what I want, to, I want to show you something right here. That wherefore, remember that ye being time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. In other words, the Jews was calling the Gentiles not worthy. Amen. And what I want you to understand, the Jews that were circumcised, it wasn't God that did it. It was done in the fleshly hands. So it was Mark made up on a Jew by the flesh, yes. not of God. Man did that, not God. The difference between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, you know, the uncircumcision hadn't been touched by the hand or made the mark by the hand that claimed to be a Christian, right? Uh, so, but the circumcision would look down on those that wasn't circumcised and, and kind of belittled them and said, you're not worthy and you're not, and they wasn't, there wasn't, there was not the chosen people at the time because even Jesus said, I'm not sent but the, to the house, the children, the lost children, the house, the lost sheep of Israel. So, but, so, uh, uh, but what I'm saying, but there was a different time that we're living in now. And I'll explain that. So the Jews had a mark on their body made by hands to say, hey, I'm a Christian. It was an outer sign saying, I am a Christian. And so we have religious people that when you look at them, you automatically say, hey, they are a Christian. How many's ever looked at, can I just teach a little bit? How many's ever looked at a person in your life and say, they are Christian? Yes. Yes. Amen. Even before you heard them talk, yes. you have, how do you know they're a Christian? Better wait before you say that because you better just listen a little bit because what comes out of their mouth I know people that right now that was raised in my faith, they backslid and they cuss and they drink and they, and they, they sleep around, but yet they will not wear a pair of pants. <laughs> Am I the only one seen somebody like that? Yeah. It's crazy because they won't let go of Traditions. And, and that is just something that an outer appearance proves that you're a Christian. And I don't know of anybody in the world that's going to be good enough when you walk before St. Peter and you're looking like a Christian on the outside. Listen, do you think that's what he's going to judge you by? What is he going to judge us by? And our good works that he has prepared for us. I got to hurry up. And the 12th verse, that at the time... Ye were without Christ, talking to the Gentiles. How many Jews we have in here? Raise your hand. So that automatically makes you. You a Jew? Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's, fl that's flesh, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. But how many realize we're actually. Gentiles. Amen. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Next scripture. I got to hurry. But now, oh, but now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, made nigh by the blood of of Christ. Yes. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Yes. Having abolished in his flesh the enemy, even the what? Law. It's an enemy to you. Because 
Is the law evil? No, it's from God. But what it does, it makes it impossible for you and I to make it to heaven. Then what was it around for? Because them people were so mean that God put it in place just to keep them under control until the Messiah came. Because they was out of control. How do you know they're out of control? Because they, they melted their gold and made false gods and worshiped false gods. It made God very angry. Why, one time they got their heads together and they was going to build, build a tower to heaven because we know more than God knows. We're just as smart as him and we can get just as high as him. Who thinks that crazy kind of thinking? So what did God do? He cut them down, fixed them where they could not speak the same languages. So having abolished in his flesh the enemy, even the law of the commandments, constrained in ordinances. Sorry, I was just trying to think. For to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So in other words... He was sent to the lost sheep of Israel, right? But when he died on that cross, he fixed it where we all could partake of God. All right. Let's look over, and I, I want to show you something. I want, this is what I'm studying on and teaching on. Grace is an inside job. We look over at 1 Samuel when King David was being anointed, and, and uh, Samuel went to Jesse's house. How many remembers that? So here's the specific order that God, or specific rules that God gave Samuel. He said, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. Talking about one of the brothers. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So this was back in the days of King David getting anointed. Way before our time, right? So I read that God's the same, right? Amen. What, what changes his mind now when God sees, well, she's got a pair of pants on. She's going to hell. Does God look at that? So who has made these restrictions on our church? Now, do you need to be decent and holy? You do. How do you become decent and holy? Your heart's right. It's an inside job. Like you on a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I better hush. St. <laughs> John 8 chapter, and I'm not taking this out of content because I, we're going to try to cover some more of this next week, that if you commit sin, you are a servant of that sin. Those who commit sin is a servant. How do I fix it? You better get it out of your life. The Bible says don't let sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Are we going to make mistakes? Yeah. But do not become a servant to sin because you're letting it stay there. Right? Get it out. Get it fixed with God. Right? So I'm not trying to take this out of content, but St. John 8 and 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. Next scripture on down. We'll skip on down. The 36th verse, and if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. How many Christian people is actually free? When you're not free, then that means you're establishing your own righteousness. And you're not allowing God to do an inside job on you. Okay? It, 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 that's how, well, Pastor Greg, you're making it too simple to go to heaven. No, I'm not. Jesus made it simple. Jesus made it easy. He said, come unto me, all you that are heavy and laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, learn of me, for my yoke, my yoke is easy and my, my burden is a lot. I hear people preaching all the time, when, but you better get ready. The devil's really going to tire your kid, your playhouse down when you start serving the Lord. You better, listen. And, and, and I, there's actually scriptures on that. The Bible says that, that for we are in heaviness through manifold temptations, 
right? So that, that means many trials. And everybody says, you better get ready, boy. You're fixing to go through some trial. But you're missing the first few words of that, if need be. Is that in James, Brother Josh? I believe it is. Anybody know? I, I can't, I, I'm bad about, how many ever read that, that you're going to go through manifold temptations? That means many trials, right? Yeah, but do you know what it actually says before that? That if need be. Do you know what that combination of word means? If need be, if something's missing. That the trial of your faith, that's, it's talking about the trial of your faith. Listen, you don't have to, you don't look forward to the devil just beating you down if you're going to start serving the Lord. You're looking at it wrong. Somebody's told you wrong. Whom the Son is set free, guess what? Can you look at it that way? Are you allowed to look at it that way? Who's telling you different than, how many, got, how many says you're going to have to be living around, uh, feeling so down on yourself? Where did this come from? I believe Brother Josh said it's a fear factor that they've shoved down our throat. Can I ask this question? How many of you ever been to church and, 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 and the preacher get up and say, buddy, when you start serving the Lord, you better look out? Amen. Is it in 1 Peter? 1 Peter 1 and 6. Somebody look it up and read it for me. I got a few more minutes, right? It says, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. If what? For a season, if need be. No, that's the words I'm looking for. If what? If need be. You are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Oh, you better look out. You start serving the Lord, you're going to, better, you're going to go through it. If need be means something's missing. In other words, what was that one word I told you to look out for when we first started tonight? faith. You are saved by grace through faith. And buddy, you better, when you start trying to fix uh, something yourself, you better look out because you're going to go, you're bringing burdens on yourself. Amen. I got to hurry up and get out of here. If the Son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. And the beauty of this is St. John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, guess what he's going to do? He's going to send the Holy Ghost to take his residence up inside of you. So therefore, you're never alone in this fight, in this called life. You're never comfortless after you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and he fills you with the Holy Ghost. He will never leave you. Now, if you walk away from him and you walk away from his presence, because listen, God only, his presence is, it, listen, can I say a statement here? God's presence is in his plan. In other words, you, he never leaves you because David said, if I ascend into heaven, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. But if you want to feel his presence, line up with his path. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm down there in the beer joint, and I've had five beers, and I done took three shots of something. I don't even, what is it called, whiskey? I don't know what. I don't know, what, I don't know nothing about that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Let's say moonshine in. <laughs> I'm hammered out of my mind. Oh, God. I will. Listen, he may help you in that time, but you're not going to... Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. He will help you during that time if you see us. But if you want to walk the life of peace, walk in the path he has designed for you. And the path that he has designed for you is not about you fixing yourself. It's about surrendering to him and letting grace do an inside job on you. And when the inside job gets finished with you, he's got a plan and a path chose for you. And his path is blessings. I believe the Bible says, I would that you prosper... Prosper. How many would like to prosper? Amen. I'm tired, Brother Greg, I'm tired of having two nickels to rub together and that's it. Do you want to prosper? How many wants your health back? How many believes the Word of God? Yes. How many really believes the Word of God? He said, I would that you prosper and be in health as your inside prospers. Your soul prospers. But we get it backwards. We want God to do for us. We like the red-headed stepchild. I hope you ain't nobody got none. 
Oh, you got to. <laughs> oh, was he? <laughs> oh, I better get off of that then. <laughs> All right, I'm meddling now. Listen, I want you to understand that you're not in this fight alone. Stop trying to fix yourself out here and let God fix yourself in here. Amen? I'm not got many more scriptures. I'm going to hurry. Romans 4 and 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? What? For if Abraham were justified by works, in other words, works, how many's ever, what's a good works other than the pants and makeup and hair and all that stuff? What's something else? Well, let's get off of that. I've hammered that enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's just go with the pants and hair then. Fasten. There's religious church. Going to church. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And those things we think that justifies ourselves in God. Like, like. Oh, God, I fasted for 40 days. I'm something. No, all you did, but suppose, if you think that, you ain't done nothing but starved yourself. You done messed up. It, fasting's so private. You know what the Bible says? If you do fast for the Lord, don't go tell everybody, I'm on the wagon. Don't eat in front of me. I'm so weak. The Bible says, get your rag, wipe your face, and act normal. It didn't say it exactly, but that's what it means. And if you pray 15 hours a, a week and you come to church and you tell everybody, you know what? And everybody says, but well, he's doing good. You just got your reward. Amen. <laughs> he said pray in secret. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying or saying a prayer, but I'm talking about when you seek in God, it's a personal relationship. Yes. It's, it's, it, 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 that's just between you and God. In other words, uh, if you expect your prayer life to do you some good, don't tell everybody how many hours you prayed. Keep it to yourself because they're going to feel sorry for you and feel good, man, that dude's holy. You know what? That pat on the back is all you're going to get. Amen. Yes. Right. And, and if, it's, if any outer emotion in the house of God, whether it be shouting or anything, if it's of God, let's, let's do it. But if you're doing it just because you've got to prove something to somebody, sit down. Just sit down. I have to. And like Brother Josh said, well, I gave to the poor. I have gave. Um, I, I paid the widow's a house payment. That's good. You're going to get a reward for that. But that's not going to get you in heaven. Right. Amen. That's not going to get you in heaven. There's only one way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am that way. And Jesus Christ is the one that made the way for you and I. And anything else doesn't measure up to Jesus. Nothing you can do. For if Abraham were justified by works, he... He hath were uh, of to glory. He, in other words, that's hard to say. If Abraham were justified by works, he hath were of to glory. In other words, what does that mean? That means he could brag on himself. That's exactly what that means. He can boast within himself. What did the Bible say? We say by grace through faith, not of works that we should what? boast. And so if Abraham, if he was justified by, listen, he ought to have been justified taking his son Isaac up there, fixing to cut his head off, and Isaac looked up, and a lot of people misunderstand that story. They think Isaac was a little lad or a little baby. No, he was 30-something years old. He was a grown man. My daddy, if he can cut my head off, I'm going to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> He know what, listen, Isaac knew what was going on. And he looked at his dad and said, we have the wood, we have the altar. I don't remember exactly how he said it. He said, but where's the sacrifice? And you know what his daddy said? He said, son, 
God will provide. And he was, if he was justified by what he did, then that would have been his boasting point. But listen, Abraham had enough faith in God. If he did cut Isaac's head off, you know what? He could have put it back on and God would have let him live. That's how much faith that Abraham had in his God. But he wouldn't have been able to boast in God or not, not, not before God. If Abraham was justified by his works, he could boast in his own self, but not of God. Next scripture, I got to hurry. It, man, I ain't got enough time. For what set the scripture? Abraham believed God. There's that word again. Believed. believed. He believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Wow. Amen. Wow. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So let me tell you what that means. If you think that you have started a mission to get to heaven and you doing it by what you look like, what you give, how much you pray and all this stuff, then you don't, you're not debt free anymore. You know who paid the debt for you and I? Christ paid the debt. He paid the debt that you and I could not pay. But if you start doing these things and your church is putting you in this bondage of the outer Style. Can I, is that a good word? It's not an inside job. I really know that there's some churches that will put you right in the hell if you don't look exactly like they think. Well, I think they got a word for that. Their clothesline message. So, <laughs> huh? Listen. There is a preacher, I know I love him, he's the sweetest man, talk to him on one-on-one, -on -one. but every time he gets behind the pulpit for 50 years, it's clothesline. Makeup, hair, TVs, jewelry. Uh, huh? <laughs> you must know who I'm talking about. No names. <laughs> Listen. But to, to talk to him one-on-one -on -one is the sweetest, humblest, kindest gentleman that you'll ever meet. But when he gets behind the pulpit for 50 years, clothesline, hair, pants, makeup, jewelry, uh, what else? No TVs. This, this gentleman preaches that you can't even go in your house without a shirt. And I'm like, how do you take a shower? I mean, what do you do, slide one arm on and, and you know. Oh, you take a shirt. Mm. Am I telling the truth? You can't, even go in your, you can't even have your shirt off in your own house. In his house. He would go to hell. This is... Yeah, no, no, no. That's it. That's it. Well, let's get off of this. Let's get off of this right now. <laughs> I give up. Somebody had to go there. Lord. <laughs> I don't want no more. Lord, have mercy. They always got to be somebody. Sometimes it's usually me. But I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. Okay, you got me. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. Just remember, if you choose not to live under grace... You're living under a debt. Yes. Next scripture, I got to close. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly. Ooh. That means he could take an old sinner wretch like me and justify me because of my belief and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
That's why you see these people off the streets that's alcoholics and drug addicts and God brings them in and saves them in one minute and the next minute they're, God's using them to heal the sick and, and do all. Why is this? It's because religion hadn't got their grips on them yet. They're, they're in a state of freedom. And guess what happens when the preacher gets behind the pulpit and starts preaching the works? Puts them right under the debt. Am I saying anything goes? No. If anything is going on in your life, that means you ain't got an inside job working on you. Amen? I mean, if you're on the job and, 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 or, 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 and this woman walks by and you say, boy, look, like, look at them elbows on her. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> That, that's coming from in here, right? Yeah. What? Hey, have you ever, you ever seen anybody with dirt on their elbows? They ain't washed them. They need to wash them things. <laughs> Let's get back serious for the word now. But to him, I'm fixing the clothes. But to him that worketh not, believeth, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? Man, that's powerful, isn't it? And I'm going to close. I'm going to read this and I'm going to close. Galatians 5 and 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, or to the other, so that ye cannot do these things that you would. You can't be free. You can't be used by God. But if you led of the Spirit, you're free. That's what that means. Don't establish your own righteousness. It will send you to hell. Amen. Don't judge yourself on how good your ability is to serve the Lord. Your ability that counted for goodness to serve the Lord is your faith in Him. Amen. And if you've got faith in the Lord... He said, my sheep knows my voice. And if you're fixing to wear something, if, he, if, if, he, if you're a man and you're fixing to wear a pair of skinny jeans, you know, and press around, God's going to deal with you about that. <laughs> God's, God's going to deal with you about that. How can, if I'm wearing something that's indecent, how am I going to get myself fixed? God's going to work on my heart. And He'll tell me, you need to cover them elbows up, son. If that's, if that's what I need to do. Uh, if I think my elbows are so pretty that, that it drives people crazy, and I think that, then I, God will let me know. You don't have to tell me. God will say, listen, son, you got too much pride in your elbows. You need to conceal them. I'm being serious. This is how it works. God will fix you from the inside out. If you, if you choose to go under the law, then you got a debt to pay. Yes. But it, but it wasn't really his fault, Paula. It was who he was not. It was what, not who. I don't want to say who. It was what he's brought up under. My dad, uh, he was the same way. And he was under such strict bondage that he couldn't even hardly. Now, my dad was a joyful guy, but he, he couldn't hardly cut up much because he's afraid he was going to offend somebody. But he was a wonderful guy. One of the greatest men I know. I, I'm prejudiced because he's my daddy. But I've seen the stain and the strain of religion mess, you know, hurt his mind. Yeah. 
and, and he loved fireballs, and he would have to eat fireballs in the privacy of his own home. Because he's afraid somebody would see him and think he's got chew back in his mouth. Is what he call it. And, and he did like to chew on his pens, and and he and and, and he was afraid somebody would think you know. There's a lot of things. I'm not. Hey, I love my dad. I'm not knocking him. He was. He's one of the most precious men I know in life. He'd give you a shirt off his back. Many Christmases for many people. He would take and we would do without. And he would tell mom, so I believe we need to help these other families. Amen. Many Christmases that my dad did that. Many times. Well, he was a sweet guy. Yes. Anybody got anything else to add to this? I hope. Josh, what was he going to say? Yes, right. Well, right. Well, the Bible says, uh, James says, you say you have faith and you say you have works. He said, I'll show you my faith by my work. Right. No. Right. To help us work out our mess to look more like Him. Yes. And during that process, we have the grace not to be counted as sinners. Exactly. But it's righteousness to come from under His care. And yes. T- case in point, when Abraham obeyed the voice of the Lord to go offer Isaac, that was, that was works. Amen. But it's works by faith. Because, yeah, so that's exactly. Yes. He challenged him to see, and, and, and after it was over with, he said, now I know, right? He knew. So, anybody else? Yeah, like I said, Brother Josh is right. It does not give you a license to sin. It doesn't give you a license to live any other way. But you, if you know your, his voice, you need to be obedient to his voice, right? Amen. And he'll challenge you, like Brother Josh said. Uh, he challenged me uh, when God said, build this church. It was a challenge for me. I seen some other sister Brooke. Um, I just got a testimony. Yes.
Yes. Yes. And I want to encourage everybody, just don't give up. Don't stop praying for them. Because I think I stood in line five weeks. Yes. And I'm just so proud of them for obeying God. And yes. So. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> and we're going to, and we're fixing to have a baptism as soon as church is over with. And we're going to take them down in that precious water and in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what an awesome night. And, and I hope I didn't bore nobody tonight. I hope it really reveals, listen. We need to trust in the Lord, amen? That's the bottom line. Not in our own self. Trust in the Lord. Yeah. Yes. When that truck slipped and threw him out, threw his body up against the tree, and then the truck landed on his wife's back. Wow. Is that the young man you was talking about, Brother Josh? He yes. had a yes. swelling of the brain, a blood clot on his brain, pelvis is busted up, and one leg is busted up. Today the swelling has went down, yes. the blood clot's gone, and at 5 o'clock they was taking him to surgery. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Wow, God's awesome, man. Oh, man, God is awesome. We're going to uh, receive the offering tonight. For the, everything goes to the church. Love everybody. Thank you all for being here. I hope, I hope tonight was revealing to you. Uh, and I'm not talking about nobody's church bad. I love every church. Amen. Brother. Hey, it was pretty bad, wasn't it? Well, Peter, yeah, he, he, he was a cussing preacher at first. <laughs> he really was. You know, when you realize how, and we've talked about this before, how many realize as Jesus' disciples when he called them? Oh, they, were they was right. Most of them was fishermen. And has anybody ever been around, I, I've watched Wicked Tuna a little bit. And you have to, if it wasn't for the bleeps, you, you, you couldn't watch it. Bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> I mean, it's just like construction. If you work around a bunch of construction guys, there's a lot of bleeps should be in. Yeah. I need me a bleeper, bleep, bleep. But I, people will tell me, say, oh, I'm sorry. I said, listen, don't act different around me. If you, don't, if you ain't ashamed of God, don't be, you know, don't be changing because of me. If you cuss, cuss. It don't bother me. Because God hears it, right? <laughs> but they do respect me, man. I appreciate it. But Brother Larry, do you want something you're doing? Or are you just acting like... <laughs> you, look, you look really cute right there doing it. <laughs> Brother uh, Stephen, say the blessing over the offering when we close. Amen. And and who's who's my offering boys or not?